welcome to my 2018 spearfishing review. The video is basically going to be in three sections. Spearfishing black bream, pollock and bass. The hunt for black bream takes us to some spectacular locations above and below the water. Here we can see a typical mark for black bream on the chart. Hiding behind kelp fronds at the base of a pinnacle in 18 metres was where I caught my first ever glimpse of a black bream. Scattered wreckage also seems to be a favourite location for the black bream, but usually in water deeper than 20 metres. But I took my first pair of black bream from the Eddystone Reef back in July. I was surprised to take my first bream at just 12 metres as it was mingling with a school of bass on a drop off. Later that day I managed a second bream from the edge of a rock pinnacle. From this footage you may just be able to see that I land right on top of three black bream in the kelp, which I didn't even see at the time. They can be very hard to spot as they sit tight to the jagged rocks below the kelp line. This, this one just came out from nowhere, so uh, that's going to be dinner for me. Um, that one's for the good lady. That one's a bit deeper in, more like 16 metres, off the, on a ledge off the back of the pinnacle. Some exploration of Cornwall quickly led me to some of the most exceptional black bream territory. We targeted several very broken up wrecks, which never failed to produce the bream, sometimes in spectacular numbers. In the sunshine, the bream actually have a rather striking iridescent look to them. Eating wise, they are similar to bass, but with a softer texture. Well, we made it to the beach. Cooking the catch on a beach fire after a hard day's diving really adds to the whole experience. Pollock hunts are far more straightforward than black bream but provide some great sport with the opportunity to catch a big fish that freezes down well, providing a longer supply of protein. We are generally shooting pollock between three and five kilos, the perfect depth for which I find is about 16 meters of water. The answer to pollock hunting is super rough ground, jagged rocks, tall kelp, from which they ambush their prey, or you ambush yours.
Of course it is well known that wrecks are favourite haunts for Pollock. Often the wrecks are more intact than those that Bream like to hang around. Succulent Pollock. Most bass hunting is done close to the shore in shallow water. I target most bass in sandy clearings and gullies, which they will cruise along in search of prey. Here we can see a typical example of a bass using a sand gully and a careful approach is required not to spook the fish. Large, solitary bass will spend much of their summer hunting inside the kelp forest, devouring crabs and baitfish. Using ambush, or agachon, we can wait in a sandy clearing and use gulping noises to get the attention of fish that might be in the surrounding kelp forest. On offshore reefs, we tend to encounter the bigger bass hunting small fish. And if a large school of fish looks stressed out, it's worth waiting and positioning the gun behind them. December now. Yeah. They tend to go off and breed quite soon. Good job. So nice to catch. Nice to catch that one. Well done, Captain JPK. We're now going to head back on into uh, mainland. Watch out. Watch out. Over now. Over now. Prison gone. Prison gone. 